Good to see you. Good to see you guys back there. Hi, you in the back. Good to see you. I haven't been seen since when? Yesterday? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, what's up? How are you? Hi, Keith, it's good to see you. I remember watching you play. Is you with your brother? Yeah. You have a twin. That's right. Carrie. That's it. Good to see you. How's everybody out there? Hey, I want to um, get started if everybody's ready to go. Everybody ready? Okay, good. I want to thank you all for coming to Kansas City City Hall today. Uh, uh, to talk about an issue that we simply can't discuss enough, and that's academic achievement of our city's children and students. Uh, if you take a look at the people in this room, and I can't think of a more diverse, animal-loving, <laughs> upwardly mobile group of people in one place. We have educators from the community, teachers, administrators, advocates, we have leaders from the business and civic communities, we have elected officials, we even have some really good friends who are Kansas City celebrities and we're very glad that they're all here. Uh, there are few issues where a group this, divor or this diverse can full-heartedly and completely endorse without reservation and that is school attendance. Let me just take a moment to introduce uh, some of the friends and colleagues who are here today. And I know I'm going to perhaps miss somebody, so apologize in advance. But Dr. Steve Green from KCPS. Thank you. Dr. Dennis Carpenter from Hickman Mills. Dr. Bob Bartman from Center. Hi, Ariana. By the way, we got, we'll deal with you later. <laughs> Dr. Todd White from North Kansas City. There you are back there, Dr. White. Dr. John Jungman from Liberty. Where are you? There you are. Did I miss any superintendents that are here that I missed? Bob I, I said Bob. Okay. Did, I did get you, didn't I? Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, they know, perhaps better than anybody, how crucial consistent school attendance is regardless of what school district that they may uh, attend. I think it's also noteworthy to note and to point out something that's unique here. We have Hickman Mills, KCPS, North Kansas City, and Liberty and Center all here today. That's a collaboration of five school districts, five superintendents. And let me tell you, the others are not here because they don't want to be. They're here because they couldn't be. Something kept them away. Their schedules were not as free and easy as these gentlemen's were at this particular time. Um, <laughs> okay, don't snort. I understand schedules. And I know, um, I know how busy uh, all of these superintendents have been. Tech, what's up? How, you doing? how are you, brother? It's good to see you. Stand right there next to George Brett. I think that's a great contrast. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, good to be seeing you. Uh, I know how busy the first few weeks of school have been for people, and uh, it's a great honor uh, for them to take the time away from what they do every day to come here and participate in this. Dr. Tony Stansbury of the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, is an area supervisor, and he's here. And uh, Dr. Stansbury, perhaps you could give us a moment of your perspective. There you are. I'm sorry, the, on, on why school attendance is important. Well, I just have a few words, Mr. Mayor. Well, I bring greetings from Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and thank you for inviting us to this important conference. We appreciate it. As I'm sure everyone is aware, September is National School Attendance Awareness Month. It's a unique time uh, for us to acknowledge the importance of something we in education work on every day of the school year. Obviously, good school attendance benefits children's education. 
The research is clear. Students who attend school regularly do better academically and are more likely to establish work habits that help them succeed in life and work. You know, the studies show that children who miss just one day of school fall two days behind in their school work. Students who are absent an average of 15 days miss a year's worth of school before their senior year. And students who miss eight days or more each year are at risk of not graduating with their class. Students miss schools for many reasons, but the reasons can be grouped into three broad categories. Number one, there are students who cannot attend school due to illness, family responsibilities, housing instability, the need to work or involvement with the juvenile justice system. Two, there are students who will not attend school to avoid what they consider unsafe conditions, harassment and embarrassment. And three, there are students who do not attend school because they or their parents do not see the value in being there. They have something else they would rather do or nothing stops them from skipping school. Our department recognizes the extreme importance of school attendance. And that's why in creating the new school accreditation plan, attendance is one of the five standards evaluated. The new standard requires that at least 90% of the students attend school 90% of the time. Now my colleagues and I work with all the school districts and charters located within the Kansas City city limits, as well as the four county area. Specifically and most recently, our work has been focused on assisting struggling schools within these districts and charters, and in doing so, it has taken us directly into the classrooms of 31 schools and seven charter schools on a fairly frequent basis. A common ob observation we've made with some of the students in some of these schools is simply that if students don't attend school regularly, they fail to learn to read. And if they can't read, write, and communicate well, they generally fail to complete their schooling, which will most likely handicap them for the rest of their lives. However, there is encouraging news, I believe. According to recent Missouri School Improvement Annual Progress Report, things are looking up in Kansas City schools and charters. The battle to improve attendance isn't yet won, but many schools are making measurable progress in removing or at least diminishing the obstacles that prevent students from regularly attending school. For example, major efforts are being made to ensure that classroom instruction is improving, that school environments are improved, that home phone calls are being made, that officials are knocking on doors, and that more joint efforts among community agencies and families are being made to ensure students get to school. But school attendance is more than just a school issue. It is a school community issue, as acknowledged by this assembly of community leaders present here today. So on behalf of the department, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and all in attendance for making the education of our children and youth one of your priorities. And thank you again for inviting us to this occasion. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Lewis Cordoba from KCPS is also here, and Dr. Cordoba's job is overseeing student attendance in the district. Dr. Cordoba? Yes, sir. Oh, there you are. Would you like to say a few words about your job, please? Just a few words, Mayor. <laughs> if you pull a piece of paper out of your pocket, I know you lied. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a difficult task uh, to ensure that all kids uh, come to school. And uh, we've been working uh, diligently with uh, the uh, city officials, the council uh, men and women, the neighboring school districts, and uh, the parents as well. Uh, we find that uh, the most critical issue in ensuring that uh, we keep kids in school is that we make the environment safe, uh, that we use out-of-box thinking in teaching our kids, but most importantly, creating an environment that is welcoming, sensitive, empathic, and ensuring that our kids are catered to. So with that said, um, I just want to invite the public to join in on the effort of keeping our kids in school. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Rochelle Morgan is the, uh, from the Missouri Charter School Association. She's been kind enough to travel here from St. Louis. Right here. Where are you? There you are. Why are you over there? You should be over here with us. 
Well, here I am. There you are. Thank you. <laughs> A few words, please. Thank you for having me here. I'm really excited to be here as I'm new to the, the association, but um, my comments will be brief. Um, as we know, attendance is so critical to our students. Um, as we see, students aren't reading at the same levels they are, their life skills are lagging. So it's really important for me on, the, on behalf of the Charter Public School Association to say that we support this initiative. Um, we just want to continue to see our kids grow and succeed and um, become successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, always gratified to have my council colleagues here. Um, I think um, in light of some conversations we've recently had, every single one of the council recognizes, understands, and believes in the importance of education, not only in their own districts, but across this entire city. Uh, so sometime here in the very short future, Councilman Wagner will speak uh, briefly about the truancy ordinance. Um, that uh, he was part of proposing. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Serco will speak about her commitment to elevating school attendance throughout our community. Uh, we also have several other elected officials who have taken time uh, to come to Kansas City City Hall today. And please help me if I miss someone. It is certainly unintentional. Uh, we have State Representative John Mayfield. Where is he? There you are back there. Thank you very much. And we have State Representatives Joe Runyon's here. Where's Joe? There you are. There you Thank you, Joe. Uh, Noel Torpy. Where's Noel? Didn't see Noel. All right. Um, Donna, thank you very much. Pronounce name? Fouch. Fouch. Donna Fouch. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't see Crystal. You see her? Crystal Williams from Jackson County. Did not see her. Did I miss anybody who's any of our electeds who are here that I missed? Oh, there you are. I'm sorry, Ira, I missed you. I apologize for that. Is uh, Abby Mueller here? Yes. There you are. Thanks, Abby. Thank you for being here. Abby is an assistant city prosecutor, um, and she and Judge Bland are, are vital to the city's truancy court. Uh, Abby, do you have uh, Judge Bland is unable to make it. He had a death in the family. Are you able to say a few words about what's going on with the truancy court? Sure. Uh, the primary goal of the truancy court is to improve attendance. It's not intended to be punitive, although if parents continue to have their students not regularly attend school, uh, they can face up to a $500 fine. But the primary goal is to get to the bottom of what's going on, why the child's not in, in school, and improve the attendance and get them back in school and achieving where they should be. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abby. I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I learned in a conversation with Judge Bland is, is that there haven't been any fines issued. Is that correct? That's correct. And the reason for that is, is that it's, this isn't punishment. Uh, this is uh, hopefully corrective uh, in loco parentis action designed to benefit the child. But one of the things that I learned is, is that there are so many things that enter into it that people don't always suspect. For example, he told me about one individual who he had seen three times. And on each of the three times, this young man was in a different school district, in a different school, with a different home address. Now, they can't control that, uh, but that certainly contributes to perhaps his sense of not belonging and therefore not wanting to go. But the idea is to get that person back to school, not to punish somebody. Uh, the punishment is a last resort and has not been necessary up to this point. We also need a workforce equipped in the future that, that has the skills to work in the industries that we are so proud of touting and trying to build through our entrepreneurship programs and issues. We absolutely have to start focusing on making sure that the children in this community are able to compete in the job market. And those skills start first and foremost with good school attendance. Uh, two years ago, um, we started looking at and have put together a program uh, that I am very uh, um, involved in, very much involved on both an, a physical and an emotional level. It's called Turn to Page KC. It is a grade level reading program uh, the object of K Turn to Page KC is to make sure that every single kid in this school 
third grade, uh, finishes third grade reading at a proficient level so that they can go on to read to learn. Up to that point, they've learned to read. We put together a great board member. Uh, we have some of the uh, board, rather, we have some of our board members here today. Uh, the first person I called was Judy Heater. Uh, and asked Judy if she would help Honcho this thing for us and work with us to get it off the ground. She was gracious enough to agree. You are deserving of your own round of applause. We also have Bert Berkeley here. Bert? There you are. I'm sorry, I turned the wrong direction. Uh, Tim Barton uh, is back there. Tim is uh, 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 new to Kansas City. Uh, but not new to the Kansas City area. He was the CEO and head of Freight Quote. He has since decided to take a secondary job and split his pay with me. Um, <laughs> but Tim has uh, 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 moved to a different position within his company so that he has more time to do other things like work on Turn the Page KC. Uh, we have UZL Pacino. Where are you, UZL? Back here. Uh, with UMKC Education, uh, works with teaching teachers to teach in an urban environment, something very important. Attendance is one of the key components with Turn to Page KC. Last year, we recruited over 183 community volunteers who were then matched with 196 students in kindergarten through third grade to work with them on reading. And in the process of doing that, obviously, attendance was an issue. Of those students, 135 improved their reading proficiency. 142 had over a 90% attendance rate. And of those students, over 90 had above a 95% attendance rate. It does does matter if we have adults in this community, people like the board members of Turn to Page KC, people like everybody in this room who is willing to work with children in order to get them to read. It makes a big difference for, them, for those kids to have people like that in their lives in terms of attending school, learning to read, and develop the other skills necessary. Um, in addition to Councilman Wagner, who I introduced, earlier who will speak for a moment. I also want to make sure that you recognize and understand the commitment of Councilman Jermaine Reed of the 3rd District who has, based on many conversations I've had with him, a great sense and great deal of desire to improve educational outcomes in the city. Councilman Michael Brooks in the 5th District as well. My Mayor Pro Tem Cindy Serco obviously standing here. And then Scott Taylor. Uh, a good man who uh, represents uh, people out in the 5th, 6th uh, District, and John Sharp, uh, another good council person from the 6th District, all here to show their support for the basic goal of educating our children, making sure that they attend school. And I've saved some of the last, uh, some of the best for last. Uh, they're certainly not the least. We have an amazing group of people who have no reason to be here other than the fact that they care about the city, they care about uh, attendance and education. Uh, our, our friends from different areas of, of, of uh, athletics, uh, George Brett, Hall of Famer, good guy, um, always got his hands in something in the city. A man who every time I hear him tell other people on national TV that you decided, decided to stay in Kansas City when you had every other option and why, Makes me proud to know you, my friend. Well, thank you. My friend. Thank you. Thank you. We have Kevin Ulick of uh, Kansas City Royals. And Kevin is one of those quiet guys that just moves big tasks around. Kevin was, where are you? There you are. Thank Kevin you. was so, so engaged in the all-star process and the build up to the all-star game to make it the best all-star game that Major League Baseball has ever had. They said that, right? They did. <laughs> they said that to you, said it to you, said it to me. And you were totally involved in that. But the real reason that I'm happy to have you here is because you are showing a commitment to the city that we absolutely love. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Man. Then we have our two friends, Slugger. <laughs> and KC Wool. All right. They don't say much, but they sure get around. <laughs> K 
Keith Cash of, okay, you guys settle down back there. <laughs> We have Keith Cash, Kansas City Chiefs ambassador, and I remember Keith playing ball with the Chiefs uh, back in the glory, well, they were glory or days, uh, <laughs> them recent days, but uh, I always admired the way that he and his brother played. I always thought it was neat to be able to play professional ball with your twin brother. So thank you for being here, Keith. Appreciate that. Uh, Bill Chapin, where are you, Bill? There you are. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. See, thanks a lot. You know, that's something too that you should know about Bill. Bill is working extremely hard uh, on behalf of the Chiefs and on behalf of this city to bring in other college football games to this arena, uh, to our Arrowhead Stadium and to this area. That's a good thing for everybody involved. It's the type of thing that we definitely want to have. Uh, for our for people who want to enjoy the weekend and contribute uh, uh, to our economy by spending dollars at the stadium and to focus more attention on Kansas City and I know how hard he's working and again if you need anything from us let us know please Thank you, Mayor. then we have somebody who I think might have a lot of cachet <laughs> with some of the kids that we're trying to reach and I'll introduce him as he should be introduced. Tech Nine! <laughs> you can do better than me. I don't think so, Tech. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, the bottom line and the reason that we're here today is because students can't learn if they're not in school. And I'm thankful for the show of support of all these folks who showed up and, and loaned, uh, loaned us their image and their, their moral support in order to make that, that message clear and uh, one that shows broad-based support. And um, at this point, I'd really like to have uh, uh, Councilman Wagner, if you'd give a brief statement about your overview of the truancy ordinance, and then uh, we have a couple of other things, and we'll get to it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you sir. And uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm brief, then I'll probably get more applause. Um, uh, this is an important issue, and one that came to this council a year and a half ago. Um, I think uh, some of that backstory hasn't been put out there, but the, but what came to our attention was in particular a a, a truancy. Uh, sweep through the northeast area and um, at that time over 50 students uh, were caught up in that sweep um, and when parents came to pick them up it became readily apparent that there didn't there seemed to be some disconnect parents were not engaged in one case I think they were mad at the district uh, for even going so far as to uh, to catch them not in school and it was at that point that I got a call from Dr. Cordoba back in December of that year 2011 and we began to talk through attendance, truancy, what does that mean? And uh, with the help of my colleague, Councilman Sharp, uh, we worked on the ordinance that was passed. And Judge Bland can't be here, so I have to point out a couple of things that he would have Please. said um, had, he, had he been here. And, and the mayor touched on that very briefly, but what was very apparent is those uh, networks that parents depend upon are not always there. Uh, the need to be at work at sometimes two or three jobs to make sure that the family has a place uh, to stay and something to eat means that they can't always be there. Um, you've got students who may not have English as a first language and so there are educational challenges that come there. Uh, you may have uh, students who are suspended um, who are let out of school and I know one of the changes that was made uh, was that we have more in-school suspension to keep those kids in there. All of those things we have found out as a result of this ordinance and how it has been brought forward. So when we talk about uh, the challenges that uh, families have, they have them. Uh, our, our ordinance helps a little bit, but it's not the whole story. And this team behind us here, I think, kind of gets to more of that team. So uh, for those who are out there, just know we've got a council who uh, finds attendance to be very, very important. Uh, you have a council that have uh, former school member, school board members, like my colleague Scott Taylor, who used to be a center school district uh, board member. Our colleague uh, John Sharp, former member of the Hickman Mills uh, School Board. Uh, so we're here to help and we're glad to be here today to support attendance and we will continue to do that for as long as we're here. Thank you. Thank you very much. John. Perhaps the most important person in this room is Ms. Ariana Gosca. Um, 
not just because she's a student at Northeast High School, but also because it's her birthday. Right? You get your birthday? Not today. It's in September 8th. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, since this is the only time that you're going to have birthday, happy birthday sung to you in front of a bunch of TV cameras, we're going to do it, right? Okay. All right? You guys going to help me out? Yeah. All right, check. Yeah. Do it all by yourself. Tech's going to leave it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ariana. Happy birthday, Ariana. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Ariana, what's it like from your perspective? Please. <laughs> well, from my perspective, Success Corps has made me into a better person. It actually gave, it actually made me, got my GPA point average up. I've actually studied so hard this year to get my grades up. And I love this because whenever I first started, I've been, I was like this lonely person that didn't have any support at all. Well, Success Corps has given me some support and it has gave me a good start. It made me into a better person. My grade point average is so high that I could actually become a CIA, which I would love to become. And it's so amazing to actually be in Success Corps. For students out there that are skipping school and that are really not getting an education will actually fail. And I would tell them that you guys really need to stay in school. You guys have so much potential in yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. You'll have better things to do. Thank you. is appropriate without a present. Thank you. And who are these folks over here? These are my, this is my mother. Hi, Mom. Hi. How are you? Thank you very much. And who's, and who's Junk Man down there? That is my baby brother. Yeah? And that's my sister right there. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for being here to support. <laughs> Let me do this last thing and then I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Serco. Thank you. We have, just this past week, the council introduced and passed a resolution um, making September Attendance Awareness Month in Kansas City, Missouri. And each of the local superintendents will receive a copy of this resolution for their use. We believe that this is important enough to make sure that we want to memorialize our intent as a council to help and assist the superintendents with making sure that all of their kids are attending school properly every single day. So with that being said, um, Mayor Pro Tem will explain while she's still standing here and uh, talk to you about some other issues as well. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. You know, after Ariana, that, that, is, that was actually inspiring. That was what this message was today, and I hope that it reaches other students. But my role in this is we have systemic problems that are hard to address, but there are many people working and attacking them. But the attendance issue also has a really low hanging fruit, and that is getting the message to parents. And it seems almost kind of silly and simple that we have to remind parents and students that their attendance does matter to their future. It's not just about numbers for a school district to reach in order for the state uh, to reach its goal, but it's your own personal success. Um, I was a PTA board president, a mother of two sons, and now a grandmother. And I actually see an old board member from William Southern El Elementary I, in the background. It's always fun to run into somebody that used to serve with. But 
it's that message that seems so simple in our everyday lives, and it's just not an urban core message. It's a suburban message and a rural message to parents that you do in your busy, busy lives where we're now most parents are having two jobs, uh, both parents are out of the home, or maybe only having one parent in the home, or it's a grandparent raising the children. That gets overwhelming, and sometimes when a kid just throws a little bit of a fit in the morning and you just it's easier to let them sleep in, or not get, we get that call from school saying the attendance isn't, they aren't there and you deal with it later and say don't do that. You've got to find a way to start communicating as a family, create that scheduling, get the barriers out of the way, and make sure that for not only your child's sakes but your family's sake, that attendance is important in your home. And as a parent, those are my messages today. Sometimes as elected officials, we're, we're supposed to bring you the really big ideas, where the money has to go and the programming and find the, the conduit between different groups that can make things happen. But sometimes it's just a simple message as a single parent to another parent saying that attendance does matter. Well, with that being said, uh, I think we've made the point rather well and repeatedly. Um, Please find a way to run this in a way to remind the people of this city that this is an important issue. Um, but I want to thank everybody who was here, and I mean that sincerely, because Lord knows you didn't have to be here. And everybody, almost everybody we call said yes, no hesitation. Um, and that makes me feel good about the mission. But most of all, it makes me feel good about the people of Kansas City and where they're coming from. So with that being said, we are done. And feel free to corner any of these folks that you might like and ask them questions about the subject matter. Or we'll take questions now if you so desire.